Well, good morning from the Cottage Farmstead. If we haven't met before, I'm Rebecca. And today we're back in the farmhouse kitchen, but today I'm not actually cooking or baking anything. We're gonna be talking about menu planning, what I'm planning on cooking and making in the next two weeks. So before I start menu planning for the coming two weeks, I wanna talk a little bit about the structure of my menu plan. So I divide ours up into two week chunks as we only go to the grocery store every other week. So that enables me to make sure I have the right amount of fresh produce on hand and know what I need to use first when I get it from the grocery store. Some other important parts of the structure is on Sundays we do what we call a snack meal. And this is leftovers from the week, uh, cheese crackers and some fruit. It could be some of the frozen soups that we have in the freezer leftover from previous weeks. It's a little bit of anything that we might have on hand, but I'm not actually cooking anything on Sunday. We're just eating what we already have. And then on Saturdays, we make a homemade pizza and it's a super simple recipe. It's 30 minutes start to finish. So that it doesn't take a lot of time on our Saturdays. Another component down here at the bottom is our breakfasts, Nathan's second breakfast and our lunches. So with the breakfast here, this is what I'm gonna be making on Sunday morning. That's gonna last us the next couple mornings. Nathan's second breakfast, he's a farmer and he gets up really early, so he needs a second round of calories mid-morning. So that is something that is just for him. I'm not making it for myself. And then our lunches, we usually do some sort of soup or easy to make like rice bowl, burrito bowl type thing that can stretch for the whole week. And that's what we eat for lunch for the five weekdays. So for example, this past week, I made a cinnamon swirl quick bread that we ate for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And then we have what we call Waffle Wednesday. And that morning, Nathan gets up about 20 minutes early and he makes waffles for us. And he usually makes a double or triple batch, so you only have to do that maybe once a month or so. And so that can be regular waffles, it can be chocolate waffles, blueberry waffles, whatever you wanna make. I typically rest, request chocolate waffles because that's what I like. Um, then for his second breakfast this week, he was doing overnight oats, so he just mixes up oatmeal in a container the night before and then he can heat it up the next day at the farm. And then we were eating a chicken pot pie soup. The way I structure a lot of our meals is usually doing a protein, a starch, and some sort of vegetable with pretty much every meal. So for example, this week we were eating oven fried chicken for three nights in a row. But to switch it up a little bit each day, we are doing biscuits and broccoli one night, we're doing oven fries with okra another night. So it provides a little bit of variety without having to prepare a complete meal from scratch every single night. So before I start filling out my menu plan, I do two things. First, I ask Farmer Nathan if he has a craving or a hankering for something, or if there's a recipe that I used to make all the time that I've forgotten about, because it's very easy for me to get into a rut and be making the same handful of things over and over again and forget about a really delicious recipe we had a year ago. So that's a great way for me to have some ideas to put here on the menu plan. And then second, I go look in our pantry and our freezer to get an idea of what ingredients I already have on hand so that I don't have to make a huge grocery trip and I eliminate a lot of food waste that way as well. And I forgot to mention one more thing that I check before I fill out our menu plan, and that is our calendar, which I keep conveniently right next to our menu plan here in the kitchen. So I am looking through it, checking to see if we're having meals with family or friends. Um, are we gonna be out one of the evenings or we need a quick meal or an easy to reheat meal that night? Um, is Nathan gonna be home for lunch some of the days or is he gonna be out where he doesn't have a microwave? So that gives me an idea of what I need to plan for and work around in the menu plan before I get it set in stone. So this coming week, we are going to be out on Tuesday. That is gonna be our errand and grocery shopping night and we typically combine it in with a date night when we're in town. So we will be eating out that night. So I'll make a note of that here. And then this coming Sunday, we are going to be having Christmas lunch with my family. So I need to remember to prepare the side dishes that I said I would bring. So I'm gonna make a note here that I need to prepare those in advance. And then this coming Monday, our dog has dental cleaning surgery and I will not be getting home until right at the dinner hour. So this needs to be a quick to prepare meal. And since Farmer Nathan had a request for venison burgers, burgers are really easy to make and doesn't take a whole lot of time. So I'm gonna put burgers on this night right here to kill two birds with one stone, an easy meal to make and something that Farmer Nathan requested. 
Since Farmer Nathan is wanting to try the venison, that means I'm gonna have leftover ground beef for myself since I'm not a huge fan of venison. So that leftover ground beef that I will have thawed, I am going to roll into our meals for later in the week. So I am going to do some unstuffed peppers. It typically calls for a pound of ground beef, but even if I have like two thirds of a pound of ground beef, that'll be plenty to fill out this recipe. And that goes along with rice really well and cheese shredded on top. And that'll probably be the rest of our meals that week. Now that I've taken care of our social calendar and uh, Farmer Nathan's request for one of our dinners, I'm gonna start taking a look through our refrigerator and our freezer to see what we, else we have on hand to make the rest of this plan. So we're down here in one of our extra freezers. This one is mostly fruits and vegetables along with extra sauces, pestos, broth, that sort of thing goes into this freezer. And in here, I'm seeing that I have a lot of sliced okra that I saved from our summer garden along with diced tomatoes. And I have a really good vegetarian gumbo recipe that I like to make, and that'll be perfect right now in the holiday season as it's very veggie heavy. And it will definitely counteract all the cookies and cake and other sweets that we're eating this time of year. I also see that I have some more broccoli in here, so I'll probably make that a side maybe with our burgers. Um, have some oven roasted broccoli, it's really delicious. So that'll probably be a side for burger night. And I also have a lot of green beans and I may try and wrap it into one of our meals in the following week. But it's nice to get an idea of what I have on hand in here already before I start getting the rest of the menu plan done. Next, let's go take a look at the meat freezer. All right, so here's our meat freezer. This big bag here is the venison that the hunter gave to us. So I will use some of the ground beef in there for Nathan's burger. We do have plenty of ground beef here. And then I have lots of pieces and parts of chicken. I got chicken on sale the other week, so I have a few packs in here. So I'll probably do something maybe with some shredded chicken for one of our lunches. I have some older meat here that I labeled that we need to probably cook that soon, so I may toss that on the menu as well. And then you'll notice we do have a lot of space in here. We are planning on sending one of our cows to the butcher in a couple weeks. So I am trying to have enough space to put a quarter cow into this freezer. So we are running a little low on the meat stock, but that will change very quickly. And it looks like I just have mostly a lot of chicken carcasses. So I could do another soup, make some broth for soup. And that will help us use some of the stuff that we have in the freezer here. So I also have sweet potatoes and russet potatoes down here in the basement. This will work great for probably one of Nathan's second breakfasts. So we can make some sort of hash out of it. And then these will be perfect for the burger night because I can make oven fries. So on my canned goods shelf over here, I see that I have a lot of salsa and tomato sauce. And taking a look at the meat freezer, I saw I have a lot of chicken breasts that I could cook. So I may make enchilada casserole because I have plenty of green salsa here. I have the chicken. I probably only need to get a little bit of tortillas as I have some cheese in the freezer as well. So that would be a really easy meal to toss together with ingredients that I already have on hand. And looking down here, I do have some applesauce, which would be great with the pork that we have over there, which would be another great meal combination. So now that I have a pretty good idea of what I have down here in the basement in the freezers and on the shelves, let's go back upstairs to make the finished mini plan. All right, so after taking inventory of what we have in the freezers and the pantry, I am going to make the vegan gumbo that I mentioned down in the basement. We have plenty of the ingredients on hand, along with rice in the pantry, so that'll be perfect. And then this coming week, like I mentioned when I was down in the basement, I have salsa, I have chicken, I have beans, and I have tortillas on hand, I checked the fridge. So I can make the enchilada um, casserole, and that will be an easy lunch to pack and reheat. I also mentioned that I did have the sweet potatoes down in the basement so we can make some sort of hash for Nathan's second breakfast that week. And with it being so cold, we often repeat the oatmeal as it is a great one to come inside for a few minutes and warm up on these frosty mornings. So when we're down in the meat freezer, I noticed that we have the old pork meat that we need to cook up. So I'm gonna do pork chops. Uh, I think I had enough for two nights, plus some applesauce that we had in the pantry. And then I also have plenty of green beans in our upright freezer. So we'll have green beans along with that, and that'll be a great tasty meal. 
So now that I have made use of a lot of the things that we had in the freezer, I've taken account of the social calendar and requests from Nathan, I'm left with figuring out two breakfasts and a couple dinners. One of the, of the breakfasts that I fall back on when I'm not particularly inspired is pancakes. It's super simple. You can put all sorts of mix-ins in it to give it some variety, different types of syrups. So we'll toss pancakes here on New Year's Eve since it's nice and simple. And then we can get out the door for church. And then this week, I'm already gonna be in the kitchen making the roasted Brussels sprouts, some bacon jam and salad for our family Christmas. And one of my favorite Christmas breakfasts is cinnamon rolls. So since I'm already gonna be busy in the kitchen, I am going to make a sourdough cinnamon roll recipe that I've been wanting to try. Since I'm already gonna be in here, I can stretch and fold and work the dough since I'm already going to be right there. So we're gonna make some delicious cinnamon rolls. That is not something I would normally make, but since it's the holiday season, it'd be something a little special that day. So now I'm down to just another dinner with some leftovers. Today I'm not particularly inspired or craving anything in particular. So when I get to this sort of scenario, I'm down to just one meal. This is when I start browsing some of my cookbooks to see if there's a recipe I haven't made in a while, um, if there's something new that I wanna try making since I have time that week to do so. So I'm gonna take out my cookbooks and browse them real quick to see if I can get some inspiration for that meal. I think we found it right here, feta stuffed chicken breast. So I know my sister-in-law is picking up some more chicken breasts for me at Costco this week, so I'll have that on hand. I know that I have some feta cheese already in the freezer. I saved plenty of basil um, from our garden this year, so I have basil on hand. So all I'm gonna need are some breadcrumbs and some dried tomatoes to make this delicious meal. And I also have some kale, seeing the side that they have here. I have kale in the freezer, so I can make a, a yummy side dish to go along with it. So our menu plan is complete. Since we already did an inventory of what I had in our basement freezers and in the pantry, I already know that most of these ingredients I already have on hand, which is great. That's a way to eliminate food waste, is cooking with what you already have in your pantry and not letting things go bad. It's also great if you do a lot of home preservation and make sure that you use a lot of stuff that you preserved over the summer so that you have a nice empty freezer going into the summer preservation season rather than trying to eat through two years worth of green beans in May. So when I make my grocery list, what I'm gonna be looking for is going through the recipes, making sure, do I have the spice? I know I'm missing like the sun-dried tomatoes for this recipe. So just a few things here and there to fill in the gaps of what I don't have in the pantry already. But it makes it super simple to make my grocery list and know what I'm gonna be cooking for the next two weeks. So one of the things that I love about this structure of menu plan is that I'm able to eat from scratch food pretty much every single day of the week, but I don't have to cook every single day of the week. I'm able to make something on one day, eat a couple leftovers, or repurpose some of the ingredients that I cooked in a previous meal into my meals. So I'm not having to be in the kitchen cooking something every single night. I'm able to have a bit of a break and reheat things. Similarly, with doing the same lunch for the five weekdays, I don't have to constantly be making a lunch every day. I know that I already have a soup or a rice bowl ready to go for my lunch, and it's easy for Nathan to pack early in the morning. Well, I hope this video showing you how I menu plan for our farmhouse kitchen was helpful, and it inspires you to give menu planning a try, as it is one of the best ways to start cooking from scratch in your home is just having a plan. It also, it is a great way to save money on your groceries as you're not buying things that you don't need since you're taking into account things that you already have in your freezer and in your pantry. If you'd like to see more content related to menu planning, cooking from scratch in the kitchen, um, or even cooking for dietary restrictions, as I'm quite familiar with doing that for myself, please comment down below so that I have an idea of what information that you would like to learn this coming year. And with that, I'll catch you next time. <music>